I'm Kara Ray, founder of Ambitious Moms Balancing Business and Babies. I'm a mother, a stepmother to three beautiful children. I'm a wife and a proud entrepreneur. I'm a mindset coach specifically for mothers who desire to strip the mom guilt and own their ambition in business and family life. The powerful and uncensored Mompreneur podcast is for the ambitious women and mothers who are ready to rise together and empower one another. Get plugged in each week for unfiltered and uncensored conversations between myself and industry leaders who support you, have unwavering points of views, and empower women to believe in themselves. We will be discussing business, spirituality, energy, strong points of views, manifestation, and what I like to call breaking the stigma topics, conversations that will no longer be silenced. This is a safe place to reclaim your power of being a woman. Let's dive in. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Powerful and Uncensored Mompreneur Podcast. Today I have the pleasure of, of, oh my goodness, I can't even speak today, of interviewing Viola. And Viola, can you actually tell me how to say your, is it Hug Taylor? Hug Taylor, Taylor. yeah, you got it. it. Yeah, I meant to like ask you that before and I'm like, oh, you know, that just happened. So guys, this is Viola. (laughs) Hi! (laughs) Viola is an intuitive business coach. She's also a mentor for visionaries. She's a holistic nutritionist and host for the Abundant Babes podcast. So welcome. Welcome, welcome. Thank I'm you. super happy to have you on here and have a fun conversation. Um, so before I start all of my interviews, I like to ask just like a fun question just to get everything kind of going. So mm-hmm. currently in this season right now, what are you celebrating? Oh, good question. I have <laughs> so much to celebrate. I haven't even told anyone this yet, so this is going to be like a massive (laughs) debut, but I'm actually writing a book. (laughs) Yes, you are. That's fantastic. Yeah, so I'm like majorly celebrating that. And then, I mean, there's like a million other things to celebrate all the time, but that's probably like the biggest thing. Do you know what's funny? So I literally was talking to my coach, Autumn, and I was Uh talking to her yesterday and I said like, you know what? I feel extremely cold to like create a journal, to write a book. And then you come on here and you're like, I'm writing a book. I'm like, this is freaking alignment. (laughs) Oh yeah. Signs, signs, signs everywhere. (laughs) Well, that's amazing. And congratulations on that. That's going to be absolutely wonderful. That's going to be a whole new journey in itself too, like writing a book. So I I, now I want to ask you questions, but I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's so funny when I like sat down to write it at first, I was just like, oh my gosh. And like words just spilled out of me and I wrote, 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 wrote. And then like, I came back to it a few days later and I was just like, like before this, I'm thinking, I don't even know how people get writer's block. Like it is so easy. And then I like sat down the next day. I'm like, uh, <laughs> what do I do now? And I just stared at my computer screen for like a full day and then just decided to watch movies. <laughs> That's funny. It's like the universe is like, just kidding you think this isn't yeah. difficult haha ha, it is yeah. and I was just um, like okay I'm just not in the vibe right now I'll come back that's okay it. though I think that's like, yeah, totally. thing. like even if I'm posting on social media if I don't like I usually just let my fingers tight and then uh-huh. sometimes I come up with like the most the longest post of life where I'm like oh maybe yeah. I could close shorten that a little bit maybe but I just I wrote see. a book <laughs> yeah. but then there's days that I sit there and I'm like I don't even know what to write. And then I have to go, I have to come back to it. So Mm -hmm. totally relate to that. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. So I love that you are also like a public speaker and that you, I want to ask you, what is your favorite thing to talk about in front of a group of people? Like what gets you absolutely lit up, fired up? And what are you extremely passionate about to talk about? Mm, There's like so much to this. Like I've always called myself multi-passionate and when I was like first starting out, I felt like it was a curse to be so multi-passionate. I was like, I need to know my thing. Like, what's my thing that I'm good at? And then I realized my thing that I'm good at is actually being multi-passionate. So <laughs> yeah. my niche is being multi-passionate. <laughs> um, and so, I mean, I started off uh, being massively interested in health and wellness. And from a really holistic perspective, like, I mean we can go into this or not. I mean, it's up to you, but I lost my dad to cancer when I was 16 and that, um, I didn't know it at the time, but it really like lit this fire in my soul because I 
realized what it was like to lose someone you love. I saw what it was like for someone to lose their health. I saw what it was also like, because my dad was a musician, but like the classic struggling musician archetype. I saw what it was like for someone to have a passion, but never really break into that to the level that they really desired to and never have that opportunity again in the future. So um, as I was kind of deciding what I wanted to do with my life, the most obvious thing for me was I wanted to figure out how I can never get a disease like that. So that led me on to um, being obsessed with nutrition. Mm -hmm. And so that's an area that I, that's kind of like, I'd say foundational work. It's not at the forefront of what I do. Like I say, I'm an intuitive business coach, but I also know that health is our greatest wealth. So a lot of public speaking that I did, like, a few years ago, like I haven't done a lot of other than online speaking, I haven't done a lot of like public stuff in a while, because I've been traveling, I mean, for um, on and off for over a year, I, my husband and I have been digital nomads. So it hasn't been as easy. But I did a lot of speaking around nutrition and just staying holistically well and how to incorporate like your health and your vibe and all of these things to stay, you know, as high vibe as possible and as healthy as possible. And that sort of thing. And now it's really merged into putting it all into a massive package where it's just like, well, it's not only your health, but it's also like, if you're going to have good health, you may as well do something that you really love and how to cultivate that inner self-belief and just like do anything. And that's like, if people from the crowd go, oh my gosh, maybe I can do the thing. I'm like, yes, I'm winning. <laughs> this is perfect. Yeah. yeah. Well, for just because I, I'm not extremely knowledgeable about holistic nutrition, can you explain mm -hmm. it a little bit? Like, just so the listeners who are listening to this can understand what holistic nutrition is. Yeah, sure. I totally can go into that. So I guess the why I um, say holistic nutritionist is because... Um, nutrition talks about often like the food we eat and although the food we eat is a massive component and I feel like it's an amazing place to start because we can consciously choose what we put in our mouth so it is it is a good place to start but when it really comes to health and when it comes to actually our bodies functioning the way that they should when it comes to feeling really good and having the whole package of what we imagine when we imagine someone with like vibrant health it really takes more than that. It also takes, you know, the relationships that you have, how you feel about yourself, the way you think about life, like your passion for life and all of these other components. So on a holistic matter, it's kind of like that understanding that yes, exercise and food are really important if you want to be healthy, but mm -hmm. really it's, it's everything in life. It's like, how do you not just like choose, okay, I'll, I'll settle for focusing on these one or two areas in my life to be well and everything else can kind of, hopefully follow along it's like no how can you thrive in all of them at the same time and um that's really where the holistic aspect for it comes in wonderful thank you for explaining that because that also i just i wasn't really 100 percent sure what that meant so <laughs> yeah and like nutrition and everything has always been interesting to me but then mm -hmm. i've always been i felt a little overwhelmed by it because there's so yeah. much information out there and so I can, it's yeah. what do you know what do you go for when you don't know something all of a sudden mm -hmm. It's like, bam, 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 bam. Here you can do all yeah. of these things. Do all yeah. of the things. <laughs> yeah, and it's also really interesting because I'm so glad that I went about my learning the way that I did. Not that, you know, like sometimes I have people ask me like where I recommend to study nutrition and I don't often rec recommend the way that I did it because I did it through a Bachelor of Science um, through university, which was really good for me because I think honestly I just needed the discipline and like the schedule mm -hmm. <laughs> to get me out of my like party lifestyle not that I was still partying at uni but I was like extreme before then <laughs> um, and it kind of taught me a little bit more about time management and stuff which was really good but I actually was so grateful to learn about the human body so in my degree um, nutrition is a culmination of seven different sciences and so we learn a lot about like biochemistry and immunology and physiology and like all these crazy amazing things that help you understand what the body actually how it functions at a core level so yeah. when I came out into the big bad world and I was like cool nutrition and then everyone's just like eat carbs don't eat carbs eat fat don't eat fat and there's like all this information flying around yeah for me it was like being able to look at that information and think like you know my only goal is really 
being as healthy as possible for myself and the ones that I love and sharing that information with the people that are open to hearing it. So I've never really had the ego and the fact that I wanted to be right. I just wanted to know the truth. So I often say, you know, like I'm a bit of a truth seeker. I don't mind being proven wrong as long as whatever I'm finding out is going to be for the greater benefit, right? So I would look at everything really subjectively and I think, well, how does this fit with how the human body works? And does this make sense? And I would look at a lot of it from that perspective, which when, it, when you look at it from that perspective, it becomes a lot easier to decipher all of the craziness that um, is out there. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I'm so grateful that I came in it from such a scientific perspective, because I think I needed that. For sure. Well, mm-hmm. and then in regards to talking about, you know, all the, di- the differences in opinions and mm-hmm. every, all the information that is out there, what do you b- believe to be true about nutrition beyond a shadow of a doubt? What is something that you just, you're like, yes, this is, this is why I love this. This is everything. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> such a big question. <laughs> I, I think like I always come back to this. So I think it's probably the right answer for this question. But it's that when we look at who we are as beings, like, you know, we're amazing, incredible souls with infinite potential living in this beautiful human body that is freaking a miracle like Mm -hmm. you will have a whole different perspective on self-love when you really learn to understand how incredible the human body is like there's some magic going on there like it's just beyond incredible but our body you know it's made up of beyond what we can see right so we have um somewhere between 50 to 100 trillion cells in our body Um, those cells are like, you know, so we see like, for example, your arm or your stomach or whatever, and then that's made up of tissue. So it might be like skin tissue or muscle tissue. And all that tissue is made up of these tiny, tiny little cells. And these cells are really simplistic in, in nature. I mean, they all have different functions and they all do different things, but what they require in order to function optimally, right? So if we were to strip down all of the functions in the body right down to the cell, this is really where the magic happens. It's right at the micro level. They need high quality nutrients. So they need vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients to function. And so without a shadow of a doubt, the more of those we're getting in our diet, the better, right? Like, and when we start to understand it's actually about the concentration of nutrients available to our cells, then it becomes less about the macros. It comes less about the carbs, the fats, the proteins, all of that stuff still is important. But when we shift our focus to really the nutrient density of food, uh, everything changes because then the cells have what they need. They work the way they're meant to. They optimize their functions. Then, you know, like things like excess weight can um, resolve itself. And, I, and of course, I believe like mindset and all of that stuff comes in because the cells are impacted by energy, right? And the way we think is also an energetic current. So all of those things impact our cells as well. But yeah, that's, it really comes down to how well we, we like, I guess, how much nutrients we make available for our uh, cells. And I mean, the highest nutrient foods are plant foods. And yeah, yeah. so that's what I believe. (laughs) Last night, I love that you touched on, you know, plants, because we were watching actually an episode of Forensic Files, because we just Mm -hmm. absolutely love that show. (laughs) But they were talking about all the different plants that humans ingest. And then they were talking Mm -hmm. about potatoes and they literally had gone down to a cellular level of a potato and how Mm -hmm. it is digested in the human body and how they can figure out what you ate last and I was mind blown I'm just like oh yeah potatoes and cells it was just one of those things that just said wow like how do I not understand or believe that this is like it's the universe everything is made out of cells everything is growing everything is changing and moving and evolving but a potato made me just mind blown last night my husband's like really you're this this is what got your attention I'm like yeah it's a potato with cells (laughs) I know it's the most incredible thing ever it's so freaking cool do you actually get the like do you understand the context of how big um the numbers a million a billion and a trillion are though I just love this analogy no go ahead okay Okay, so we, we talk about million, billion, and trillion so often in our society these days that I think people really lost, lost touch of how big the numbers actually are. But if you relate it to time, take a guess at how long ago a million seconds ago it was. Like, just now? <laughs> I don't know. A million seconds. A million seconds. A million seconds. 
It was 12 days ago. That's so funny. Okay? I so that's a million seconds. Now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what am I, I can't even think this morning. I'm like, that is the worst answer, guys. I swear I'm not an idiot. <laughs> It's okay. It's a tricky question. Oh, that's so because, funny. Uh, you never think that way though, right? So it's like, okay, a million seconds ago was 12 days ago. Yeah. How long ago was a billion seconds ago? Uh, wouldn't that be like, um, wouldn't it be like a month? It's 32 years ago. What? <laughs> My- <laughs> you were making Can you prepare me for your not so smart this morning. <laughs> no, this is the context though. Like, can like everyone listening right now understand the difference between a million and a billion is the difference between 12 days and 32 years, like between just the other week and longer than I've been alive. Like this is a massive difference. Right. And when you, when you hear the difference now to a trillion, it's even crazier. A trillion seconds ago was 32,000 years ago. And we have somewhere between 50 to 100 trillion cells in our body. Like, mind-blowing, right? Yeah. (laughs) I'm sitting Your face right now, you're just like, uh. (laughs) My brain cannot compute. This, This is hilarious. I've never had a moment where I'm like, how long ago was a million seconds? Just now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is good. Okay. That really blew my mind though. Honestly, that's why I had that facial expression. Like, what is she yeah. saying right now? My, my mind blown, but it's, it really puts everything into perspective, into context because we truly underestimate the human body We underestimate mother nature. We underestimate everything that is on this planet. And so to to be talking about subjects such as that, I even love that because Mm -hmm. I get mind blown because I've always, Mm -hmm. always known that it's not just like everything is ever evolving. And so when people really take that for granted, it really bothers me to my core because Mm -hmm. you like inside of you, there's constantly things going on and things moving and changing. And mm-hmm. so how can people not believe that that's happening to every other thing that's around them? Mm. So yeah. that's I love that you talked about that. That's just, <laughs> I'm still, I'm still processing. I'm going to have to listen to this again <laughs> and then <laughs> laugh at myself for how ridiculous I sound. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, my goodness. So in regards to talking about, because we were talking about all these numbers and billions mm-hmm. and trillions, but when you're talking to your clients and if they're stuck in, let's say like a lower mindset about um, mm-hmm. what their goals, ambitions, because I know that people get so focused on a goal that they don't mm-hmm. look at the bigger picture of their mm-hmm. end game, like their vision, like what is the, the massive vision? What is something that you, you love to talk your clients through if they're stuck in this lack and scarcity mindset? Mm -hmm. I think you nailed it on the head when you said like when people are often in that space they're concentrating too much on the what's right in front of them rather than what is in the future like I honestly believe that the things that we desire are no mistake I mean there's like that verse that says God gives us the desires of our heart and I truly believe that it means it's not that he's going to give us all the things it means that he gives us the desires so that we know what we're meant to pursue in our life you know? And so it's like, when we desire something, like when we get so excited about the idea of something, when there's like something that we're like, oh my gosh, that would be amazing. It's like, that is a sign. It's not just a coincidence that that's happening. It's a sign from the universe being like, hey, yes, you should pursue this. And, um, and so already, I feel like it brings peace of mind knowing that if you desire it, it means you're meant for it, which means it is possible for you right? Uh, It means that everything within you, everything about you has the capacity to do it, to learn the things you need to learn and to like live this, right? So when we get so caught up in the, in the how, usually it's about the how, right? They're just like, oh, but I don't know how I do it. or I don't know what to focus on. It's just like, 
bringing it back to the understanding that we don't actually like, yes, right now on a human level, like when we're planning our next steps and we're writing down our goals and all of this stuff, it can, can seem really overwhelming, but the aspect of us that, um, that worries about the how or doubts that it can happen is the part of us that is, you know, I guess the most human level of ourselves. It's where our limiting beliefs come in, but I always describe it as this, like, if you were to imagine in your mind the comfort zone, right? So you're kind of like, they're chilling out inside this bubble and this bubble is your comfort zone. And as it grows, you have access to new things and anything outside of your comfort zone um, are things you don't currently have in your life yet. So if you you know, wanna be a speaker or you want to have this business and you don't currently have it, it's outside of the comfort zone. And leaving this bubble is extremely uncomfortable for many reasons. One, because the bubble's safe. <laughs> And two, because what makes up this bubble is actually all of the beliefs, all of the perceptions, all of the idea, ideas or anything that keep us within that bubble. So let's say you see a beautiful shiny goal over there and you're like, oh, that sounds really exciting. And you see it and it's meant for you because it's in the room that you're in or, you know, however you want to imagine this analogy. And... Um, <laughs> You like want to reach for it and you go to reach for it and you, your arm kind of, you know, penetrates through the bubble and then you're just like moving through all of those beliefs and all of those perceptions that have currently kept you from having that. And so as you start to reach out, all of a sudden it's just like, oh, but you know, what if I can't do it? Ding, ding, ding. You believing you can't do it or telling yourself you can't do it is one of the things that has stopped you from having it in your life so far. And then you're like, but what if people laugh at me? Oh, okay, so here's another one. You're, you're worried about the perceptions of others, so you're playing small so that other people aren't, um, you know, don't, don't make fun of you or so that you don't shine so big that you bring attention to yourself. So here's another thing. So if people could really shift that perspective and start to understand that those things aren't coming up because they're the real fear, they're not the real problem, what it is, what it's really about is it's showing us the areas that if we want that thing, these are the areas that we need to grow in. So, okay, I need to work on my belief in telling myself I can have it. So if I'm meant to have it, if I desire it, I'm meant to have it. So if I'm meant to have it, how can I talk to myself in a different way that's more encouraging of me having the thing versus me thinking I can't have it? Or, you know, who can I connect with that can maybe be supportive and I know wouldn't laugh at me along this journey? Or how can I, you know, um, rewire this belief of being so concerned about other people's perceptions that it's holding me back from living what I truly want? And so it's more like it gives us the clues of where we can grow so that we can actually have that thing. And then as we work through those beliefs, oh, look at that, that part of the bubble is the growing and it's now encapsulating this new thing and calling that into our life. So I don't know. It's like a different perspective to put on it, I suppose. I love the perspective that you're giving though. I really do because oh, I, well, I can relate to it and I understand it because the limiting beliefs of yourself and others, it, you're right. It's something that you have to move through. It is something that you need to be, um, it's like not, not necessarily a test, but it is something that you need to go through so you can be knowledgeable in that fact so that you can also teach those things because yeah. currently like before I launched my business, I was going mm -hmm. through a ton of limiting beliefs, but not just my own, but the limiting beliefs of others, because my parents mm -hmm. were living in this state where you had to have a nine to five job. You needed to have benefits, all the, all these things in place, or you needed to go to post-secondary. And I had gone mm -hmm. to post-secondary and I had done um, well, I actually was a paramedic and so I worked shift work, but it was not serving me at all. I was not passionate yeah. about it. I was not lit up about it. And I had mm -hmm. no ambition to go back to school. I didn't mm -hmm. because I didn't want to waste any money. And, mm -hmm. and so going through all those limiting beliefs, because even when I started, my family said, well, what kind of career is that anyways? What are you going to be doing? How is this mm -hmm. going to work? Um, how are you going to make money? When are you going to start making money? And then I started feeling like I had something to prove, which is yeah. not the mental state that I want to be in when I'm doing my, when I'm, when I'm creating my business. And so I really yeah. had to reevaluate those things and rewrite those limiting beliefs and get down to what I truly desired. And at the end of the day, I desired to empower women and to come on and talk with other women from around the world. And I believe in proximity and how proximity is so powerful. The women mm -hmm. that I've met through just my coach, it are mind blowing, amazing women. They mm -hmm. are ambitious. They are powerful. They are empowering. They are beautiful beings. And so 
Mm-hmm. It's, it's nice when you shift that because like you said earlier, actually, I'll piggyback. You were talking about how you were in university and how you were partying and, and mm-hmm. all those things. I used to be there and I used to yeah. spend a lot of time with people who didn't have goals or ambitions and just wanted to get drunk every night and mm-hmm. drugs, all these different things. And, and that was not, never serving me ever. And so I, I decided to change that and then surround myself with women who, who believe in other women, especially like I'm talking to you, for example, Mm -hmm. and you live like thousands and thousands of kilometers away from me, but I'm Mm -hmm. still having such an amazing conversation with you and learning from you. And Mm -hmm. that's the power of proximity because I'm still here on my computer with you talking with you, but you're in a different country. So, and I would rather spend my, my mornings talking with women such as yourself than be sitting around and getting drunk and not working towards like my goals or my end game. And so Mm -hmm. tangent there, but. (laughs) Oh my gosh. But I'm just like preach over here, just (laughs) nodding away. Cause I'm like, yes, 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 yes. It is so important. This is the thing. I freaking love the internet. Like I love love it, love it, love it. Because I feel like, like exactly what you said about proximity. It's a way to bring people together that normally wouldn't have been able to be together. I mean, I think like, well, I 100% don't live in the same city as any of my friends because I don't know anyone where I live because my husband, like I mentioned earlier, we're digital nomads and we're in Morocco right now and we've only been living in this city for a week. So <laughs> I know no one. And so I would have no friends if it wasn't for the internet. But thanks to the internet, like every day I'm talking to amazing people. So yeah, yeah I love it. <laughs> oh yeah, even the, the women that I'm collaborating with and talking to, a lot of them live in the States. They live in Texas or one of them lives in Australia. And so, and those are the women that I talk to every day. Not that I don't Mm -hmm. have friends that are here, but my time spent talking to these women, there's continue, there's continued growth every day talking to them because they're the women that, that also push you out of your comfort zone, out of that fear and ask you the questions that some, that, you know, you should be asking yourself, but you don't. (laughs) And and they do, and they hold you accountable. And I Mm -hmm. love that because I, I kind of thrive off of being accountable to somebody. It's like, Mm -hmm. it's just kind of my personality that if I don't have, not just for myself, because I like to be accountable for me, but if I'm also accountable for other people and I can be there for them and it also is supportive to me, I thrive on that. I love accountability. (laughs) That's what's so good about having a coach. And I think being a coach as well, it's just like, that's such a powerful aspect to it is just having someone that you know is like genuinely cares about you and is going to call you out when you need to be called out. (laughs) Oh yeah. Even yesterday I was on a call with my coach and I said to her, I said, it sounds like I'm just venting a lot to you. And she said, why are you upset about that? I'm here for you to listen. I'm, it's a safe place. And if that's what you need to get off your chest so that you can move through, then let's do that. And Mm -hmm. it's nice because you don't have to apologize. You just get to be a hundred percent you, you don't have to worry about anybody else's opinions. And Mm -hmm. if you are, you know, if you, if you're stuck in this self doubt and if you're stuck in those spaces, they're there to help you walk out of that. (laughs) And so I agree with you about having a coach. You know how many people have asked me, why the hell do you have a coach? What the hell is a coach? What, why are you doing that? That's ridiculous. (laughs) That's so expensive. And before I totally would have said, yeah, that is expensive. I, but now I invest like This month, I think I invested like triple of what my coach was. And so to people who are like, that's a lot of money. I'm like, really? Is it? Yeah. I'm like, because I'm tripling those things. And I, it's just, it's just, it's funny when people are so stuck in this like lack mindset where you're investing in a coach. I didn't see it as this is a waste of money. I'm spending this money and it's going away. This is being invested into myself and I'm being able to grow and learn and be in a safe place, but also be authentic and what I truly desire and my purpose and all these things I'm able to figure out naturally with guidance. Mm -hmm. She's not giving me and handing me all the answers. I have the freaking answers. I think that's the biggest thing that people like forget about is that you have all the answers. Just sometimes it's covered by all these limiting beliefs, these self doubts and all these things on top that they strip that completely away. Well, they make you strip that away. (laughs) Really, My coach did that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But in regards to, we're talking about coaching and we were talking about, you know, beliefs and limiting beliefs. Do you have like a spiritual practice at all? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want to talk about it? (laughs) 
sure. I mean, I feel like my whole life is a spiritual practice now. <laughs> like, um, I feel like because what happened to me is like I've always been interested in like the law of attraction and like, you know, little things like that. But I never really had, I guess, like a lot of context or meaning to it. And then I went through like a few harder years of uh like a few years ago where um, long story short, my husband and I had built up a business and we were really like naive and we were like spending beyond what we were earning. Even we were earning really well, but we just had this expectation. It was just going to keep growing. And then it didn't, it all crashed. And then we just got ourselves in a really, really bad financial situation. And it was like, we were kind of trying to do all the same things to, to change that. And through that time though, it's like, I learned so many incredible lessons and um, it was so interesting because like in a nutshell, what happened is I really had to learn how to become abundant in myself and feel abundance in like some of the poorest times I've ever been. And that completely catapulted uh, me into a new direction of my life. And it was just like so incredible. But through that, I was doing, you know, I was really consistently telling myself that it was all going to work out for a reason. And I would imagine myself like on stage one day talking about, you know, how I got through it. And it was all these things that helped me, you know, not freaking go into a hole of depression (laughs) at that time, quite honestly. Um, But through that, like I started having conversations with people about like meditation. And then I started being really interested and, you know, like I felt like the support of guidance from things like oracle cards or you know just interesting things like that and then I started um realizing oh my god I actually have an intuition and I can listen to it and I started having this just yeah deeper connection and so over the years it just has really developed to the point where now it's almost just like everything I I think I'm doing is in spiritual flow um you know like a daily or even momentarily I'll check in and you know just be like oh can you know send me guidance or give me clarity or it's anything right where I have that. But, um, a lot of my, I'd say currently, like for me, I'm not a, I'm a super structured person. So I kind of have a fluid routine that changes from time to time, just whenever it feels good for me. Currently, I like to wake up and do a little mini meditation where I just create that space for myself and my mind. Um, and then I like to, um, do a little bit of gratitude, uh, journal, um, about my visualizations. I visualize my clients goals and, um, yeah, just have a whole lot of fun with that. And that's probably like my main practice at the moment. And then Mm -hmm. other than that, it's just my, yeah, it's kind of just like the way I feel about life, I guess is a good way to put it. (laughs) hundred percent it is because I believe a spiritual practice is what you make it. It doesn't have to be complicated. You get to do Mm -hmm. whatever you feel is a spiritual practice to you. And so Mm -hmm. in regards to like intuition and spiritual practice, because this is something that I've been diving into deeper and deeper and deeper because intuition is if for the listeners who are listening, intuition is like that gut feeling that if Mm -hmm. you're supposed to go, if you think you're supposed to go right, but it's like this, this like gut feeling like, no, I'm not supposed to do that then don't do it. (laughs) Trust it. It's not leading you the wrong way. And so, (laughs) but in regards Mm -hmm. to coincidences, like I don't believe in coincidences. I believe that things happen for a reason that there is, there is a reason for everything in life and everything that happens to us, for us, everything. And so the other night I've never, you know, you were talking about Oracle cards and like that trusting, surrendering, that, that intuitive, um, vision, visionary, all those different things. And finally, because I had taken like a spirituality and business course, and this was something I suppressed for probably oh, over 10 years. Um, Cause when I was a child, I was very intuitive mm-hmm. and I used to draw pictures for my mom and I used to draw auras around people with their colors and all these different things. <clears throat> and my mom asked cool. me one day, yeah, she asked me one day, she said, what is this, honey? I said, it's my, we, we were at an assembly. I said, it's at an assembly. She's like, yeah, but what is everything around people? I'm like, it's their colors, duh. Like, like, like she should, like, she was supposed to know, but I didn't know any different when I was a child. And she's like, what do you mean you see colors around people? And I said, well, don't you? Like, this is, I've always seen this, at least from what I could remember. And then after my grandparents passed away and there was a whole bunch of turmoil and a lot of things that happened, I suppressed mm-hmm. that far mm-hmm. down, way far down. And so then I felt extremely cold over and over again the past couple of years to really dive back into spirituality, but I just kept being like fearful of it and I didn't know what to do and I felt judged and I felt mm-hmm. scared. 
And then I decided, okay, fine. I'm just going to open this can of worms and I'm going to, to just like embrace it. Oh my gosh. I had the worst freaking panic attack of my life because mm-hmm. I decided to like open it up, but I'd suppress it for so long. And so when you mm-hmm. subconsciously suppress things, I didn't realize how much I was suppressing and then it all came out. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. I'm like going off on a tangent and I, hopefully this makes sense to people, but mm-hmm. spirituality is what you make it and what you believe for it to be. And I've realized, and I love that we're talking about this and the limiting beliefs of others and what you believe, because I feel like this is something that needs to come out and that I need to talk about and share because it's extremely important and weighs heavily on my heart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because when I went into this whole spirituality and business course, I knew that this was something that was going to come out. And I knew that I was mm-hmm. going to start talking to people about it, that I was going to be judged, that people are going to call me woo woo or weird, or that it doesn't, uh-huh. it's not believable. And I actually said, I said, I wish I could put you inside my body so you could see out of my eyes what I was seeing so -hmm. that you could actually see and picture it. Because to explain it to somebody about seeing vibrations come off people or colors come off people, I don't know how to like describe it any other than that besides somebody coming inside my body and looking at it and seeing because it's not, it's not bullshit. It is real. Mm -hmm. And like people really underestimate the power of life and all these vibrations and energies. And once I got into reading all of this, I kept wondering like, why do I see this like vibration around people? It's like this like Mm -hmm. light around people. And when they move, it it, like follows them. And I tried to explain it to my husband and he was just like, what are you talking about? I'm like, (laughs) I might sound a little crazy to you, but I swear this is happening. I swear. (laughs) It's, So my spiritual practice, I love, you were talking about Oracle cards. I just bought a new set of Oracle cards and they're beautiful. And it's, it's crazy when you really tap into your intuition and you really ask for that guidance and you ask for that next step. It's there, it is there and it will be planted right in front of you. You just have to be open to receive it. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest part is like so many Mm -hmm. people are like, oh, well, I'll ask, but then they're not open to receive the guidance Mm -hmm. or take action. And I want to talk to you about action and how (laughs) I was like this, I, I'm going somewhere with this. I'm just, hopefully I'm not ranting too long here. Does it make sense? I love it. No, it makes perfect sense. And I feel like that's been so true for me as well. And it's like, I even, I had, um, I've had a spiritual uh, mentor twice. Um, so I worked with one at the end of last year um, with my business when I first launched my coaching business. Um, and that was amazing. Um, but that was kind of from like an external point where she was kind of giving me her intuitive guidance. And then this year I worked with her again to develop my own intuition. And it was just like the most crazy thing as well, because I remember back when I like used to be like, do I have an intuition? (laughs) You know, like just questioning it and being like, oh, but make some people do and some people don't. And, you know, I, I must not be gifted. And, you know, also I thought this about manifestation. I used to be like, oh, some people are manifestors and some people aren't. And I'm just not one. (laughs) And now I'm just like the best manifestor I know. So it's like hilarious. But, um, yeah, so that, that was just like such a transition as well, because then I started like asking and being like, oh, I wonder if I could explore this more. And then, you know, like I was introduced to the deeper meaning of crystals. And then I like found Oracle cards and then I found like all these people that are into it. And yeah. And so it's so funny how it evolves and it really gets to the point where you're just like, you have this like cheeky smile on your face when you hear people talking about it. Cause you're just like, everyone actually has this incredible gift. Like yes. everyone can tap into this knowing and being able to see, you know, um, although people have like different stronger gifts, usually in different areas, like you being able to see the colors around people is so incredible for me. Like I have a more um, of a knowing. So it's like, I just know things in the moment and they're the right thing to say and they're the right answer. And they're, you know, it's, that's more where, where my gift started and, So it's like, yeah, it's really interesting um, how, yeah, I don't know, we're so much more powerful than we give ourselves credit for. And then what you said, getting, looping it back around, action is so important. (laughs) It is though, because we can literally sit there and we can ask for all these things and we can ask for these guidance, but you still need to take action. You still need to be going through things and, and doing the damn thing. And I think people really underestimate that. Sometimes people are like, oh, well, I'm doing all the positive affirmations and I'm doing these things. Are you taking action? Are you embodying that? Are you embodying this next level version of yourself that you desire to be? Because that is what's going to put you on alignment and attract 
all of that to you because like we were talking earlier, there's all these energies and they flow and they go up and down. And if you're sitting here and you're coasting, but like what you want is way the hell up here, how the hell are you going to get to that if you're not matching that, if you're not embodying that? That's something that I've had to really dive into probably in the last six months where my coach kept saying, okay, we're doing all the things, but are you actually embodying it? Are you actually believing this is possible for you? Are you taking that next action? Are you doing those things? And I really had to ask myself, I thought I was, I was almost giving myself constant excuses like, oh yeah, I'm doing it. No, no, I was not actually truly embodying. I was like, I, it's like I was lying to myself. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, girl. Oh, oh yeah, girl. You, you, you're going to have those 10K months. And I'm like, seriously? When, when she asked me that, she's like, really? Are you doing what that embodies? Are you taking those steps? Are you living the life that you've envisioned? Because if you're not, how are you going to be in alignment with it? And at first, when I was talking to my parents, but they're like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, mm-hmm. like you don't do that. And I said, and so it was really hard to talk to them about it. And I had to just talked mm-hmm. to my coach. And so I like that you're talking about action. I will let you talk a little bit more about action because I totally just, boom, went with that. <laughs> no, I love it. And because I think, um, I mean, I don't know how much you've looked into like, well, I'm sure you have, the law of attraction, right? Oh, yeah. I feel like it's like the entryway for a lot of people. Yes. <laughs> and um And the interesting thing is, is that a lot of people have heard about the law of attraction. I mean, the movie, The Secret was really big. I believe that's where like everything, you know, funny story, actually, because I, all of this really started for me when I was like 25, I'd say like when I was 22, I started um, getting into entrepreneurship and stuff. But, and I was always kind of like had the secret and all that stuff and the law of attraction in the back of my mind. But really before I got into really understanding and embodying, I was more 25. But when I was 18, I watched the secret for the first time. And I remember um, just the concept of like, you can actually change things with your mind. I was like, I knew it. I freaking knew it. I knew it. it." And I had this thing and I still, I feel like a, I don't know. I feel kind of like crazy when I say this, but I had this like really weird thing. Cause I had um, size 10 feet. I don't know what size that is in like different shoe sizes. So sorry, yeah. but size 10 in whatever country I was living in. <laughs> um, and uh, I really wanted size eight feet for whatever reason. And yeah. I don't freaking know if like the shoe sizes changed or what happened, but now I like, all I did was think about, it. I'd be like, I love having size eight feet. I have size eight feet. And the next time I went to buy shoes, I had size eight feet and I couldn't freaking believe it. And I still feel like a psycho when I tell that story because I'm like, nobody's going to believe me, but it's like the weirdest thing. And I don't know if maybe before I was buying like shoes slightly too big and then I bought them slightly too small. I don't know what happened, but all I know is it worked. And I was just like, see, it works. And then that was my confirmation to the, to the law of attraction. But back to what I was saying, um, People don't actually know that the law of attraction is actually one of 12 universal laws. And so all of these universal laws are actually how the universe works. So when we talk about manifesting, calling things into our life, designing whatever life we want and calling them in, um, the law of attraction is one. And it essentially just talks about like attracts like. So things of a similar vibration, which vibration is also one of the laws, the law of vibration that everything has a vibration. So the law of attraction talks about things that have a similar vibration will attract similar vibrations. So it's like, like attracts like. So if you're vibrating at this negative complaining state, then you're going to call in things that are similar to the vibration of complaining versus if you're vibing at like, you know, 10k months that's what you're going to call it and and, you know positivity and growth and all these amazing things and law number three of those so law of attraction i believe is law number seven and the law of action is actually one of the universal laws and it's law number three and so the law of action talks about that if you don't take action on the things that come your way so it's like if you have like something you want to manifest and um, you have an opportunity to take action, whether that is putting it into physical action, whether it is changing the way you think about something. So for example, you're wanting to shift to like the belief that everything is abundant and then you notice the, you know, the universe gifts you this opportunity to, to look at a situation and for a moment you want to think of it from a scarcity perspective, taking action in that moment is recognizing that you, it, you are having a scarcity thought and switching it to 
a thought of abundance, right? Like that can also be considered taking action, but it's really taking action to the point where you're not just sitting back because that's not how the world works. Like action's no. a huge part of it. <laughs> oh yes. And you know, I love that you talked about the size 10 to size eight because I don't think you're crazy and I'm going to oh my God, I'm so glad. because this people might think I'm crazy too. The other night. Yeah, when I was telling that, I'm just like, regret, regret. Oh, no, 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 girl. I'm going to get on the same level as you. Yes. And I'm going to be vulnerable and you're good. Um, because this is really vulnerable for me because I started, you know, tapping into, because I believe in like the universe and how everything flows together in the energetic fields and, and how we feel as, as human beings. And so the other night, I, because I, I was talking to you about how I was having panic attacks and I was getting worried because mm -hmm. I was bringing all these things out. And so I have a, a daughter who's a year and a half. And I mm -hmm. firmly believe that the people around you can feel off your energy. And mm -hmm. I'm also an empath. And so I have a feeling that my daughter is the same. And when she feels off of my energy, she becomes very agitated, very upset, very like constant. She, she can't calm down. And she, and it's like, I, I always wonder what is going on. You were fine. You were sleeping. I don't know what happened. And so my husband was, was away and I was going to bed. And then all of a sudden she woke up and cause I was starting to feel anxious she woke mm -hmm. up in a panic and she was, she was screaming, she was crying. And this, this went on probably for like two hours. And so finally I had to lay her back down because I was so exhausted. And I, and I literally remember laying in bed and I was crying and I like lifted, I opened up my hands and I literally said, okay, universe, I'm going to trust and surrender to everything right now. I'm going to believe in this. I'm going to trust this because whatever my daughter needs, whether that's peace serenity if it's if it's calmness can you please provide her with that so she can have this well-rested night's sleep and so that i can so we can be like just on a better state together and not even mm -hmm. two seconds later she fell asleep and went to bed mm -hmm. yeah. i was absolute i remember crying after that because i i remember pushing it away for so long and because i don't mm -hmm. believe i had i said there i was like Maybe that's a coincidence. No, Carrie, you don't believe in coincidences. There, there is no such thing as a coincidence. Things happen mm. for a reason. And exactly. so synchronicity. I, yes. And so I laid there and I just bawled because I couldn't believe that I had pushed this away for so long where literally it was right there and it was right mm -hmm. there in front of me. And all I had to do was ask or all I needed to do was be there and be open to receive that and mm -hmm. literally trust that is a mm -hmm. message I have been going through probably for the last, well, I'd say a couple of years about trusting and surrendering. And I kept pushing and pushing and pulling and pretending that I was really trusting, but I wasn't and always mm -hmm. on this like edge. And so that night I literally didn't know what else to do. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm lost. My hands are up. I have no idea what to do anymore. I just need something. And it was mm -hmm. in that moment that I was not, I guess, reassured, but almost reassured that there's so much more to this world than we even realize. Like we can't mm -hmm. see everything that's going on. And people yeah. talk about that like 3D projection and they talk about the other, like the other worlds and what we can and what we can't see and how some people mm -hmm. can and some people can't. And I believe that everybody is intuitive. I mm -hmm. believe that we all get these feelings when something's right, when something's wrong, that's your intuition. If you've ever felt that, you have an intuitive gift. But if you mm -hmm. suppress that with all these negative things or continually surround yourself with negativity, all you're going to do is pull that in. Like, I believe in that too. People wonder why mm -hmm. if you wake up in the morning and you stub your toe and all of a sudden you're like, ah, oh, shit, my coffee sucks. And oh, I'm traffic sucks and all this stuff. And you're, and you're putting that out there and you end up having the shittiest freaking day. Well, you put that out there and the universe mm -hmm. was like, all right, girl, I'm going to give you all of that. You're going to have a shit ass mm -hmm. day. Like, <laughs> or you could be, yeah. no, I'm going to change that. Okay. I stubbed my toe that doesn't have to depict the rest of my day. Mm -hmm. So that's another tangent. But I do truly believe that we all are intuitive and we all have these gifts and whether we want to suppress them or not, that's your choice. And you, you get that choice. It's a whole, you know, thing of being a human. You get to choose what you want and what you exactly. don't. And mm -hmm. so, but I really feel like this needs to t be talked about despite what other people believe, what they think mm -hmm. to be true, like all the negative. Because I've even had people, which I've seen on through like Facebook who say, you know, I'm having a shitty day. So all these positive Nancy people just like, leave me alone and don't talk to me about how I can change this. But you mm -hmm. can. We teach mm -hmm. this to our children that they have a choice on how they mm -hmm. feel. 
what they say, how they act, everything that they do, that's a choice. And those choices mm-hmm. affect other people around them. Mm-hmm. It's just, oi. I just, yeah. I get so passionate about this, this stuff that I know that this stuff has to be talked about and come out. And this is the first interview that I talk about my spirituality in this way, which oh, cool. I'm Fun. excited about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I actually, um, I, I believe in that so much as well. And I think it is hard because it is a sensitive topic because when you are in a space where things really feel like they suck, the last thing you want to do is take responsibility for your energy. <laughs> it is just like, F off. I do not need that right now. (laughs) You know, and it is all okay to be human and sometimes have a moment. It's like, it's not saying that when you get into this vibe, suddenly you're friggin' like the holy grail of positivity and epicness and you never have a bad freaking day. No way. Like a, a huge part that I think is so important to understand, especially for people like me, like I coin myself as an eternal optimist. I'm so positive that for the a long time actually one of my struggles was I would like over positify my negative experiences and therefore I was never really feeling them. Therefore I was never really dealing with them. Therefore they were basically like perpetuating into my future, like and growing and getting worse. And it was just like this shit show basically. (laughs) Um, But it was like, it's being able to feel all of your emotions and know that it's going to be okay. And the moment that you've kind of let them release, you choose to now move forward with positivity rather than hold a grudge about it. You know, and I think um, on, on another level, like a lot of ways that we suppress this inner power and this inner strength is not even just people who are negative. There's people out there who are actually generally quite positive about life but how they're suppressing their like next level and that next awesomeness and their spirituality or whatever it may be is through settling as well. It's yep. saying, you know, life's okay. And my job's good. And you know, my parents are proud and my, my love life is pretty okay, but you know what? That's good enough. You know, don't, I don't need the law of attraction. Like I'll just have this, you know, in fear that if you change something, you might not get anything better. But that is actually also one of the ways that we really suppress ourselves and limit ourselves is through settling. It's just like, oh, gives me like bleh, the heebie I used to feel that way. I used to settle yeah. for things that where I would settle for the way that people would treat me. And mm-hmm. I would always yeah. wonder why if I'm treating people with such positivity and openness and love and warmth, why is that not being returned? But I was allowing those people to treat me yeah. that way. I wasn't setting mm-hmm. clear boundaries. And, you know, talking about how what we allow, what we settle for, I used to settle for going to school because that was an expectation or yeah. you know, having this like nine to five career or shift work. That was an expectation. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I had to prove something to my parents or to, to friends mm-hmm. of mine that I was doing something with my life, even though I was freaking miserable with it. And yeah. It was like this big ripple effect because when I was working as a paramedic, I ended up working for somebody who was, who was a horrible human being, who was mm-hmm. very, and I, I, I hate saying those words, but they, it, in the regards to words horrible, I mean that just very negative, very demeaning, very like a person who, who to make themselves feel better had to make you feel very small. And mm-hmm. I remember in this moment, where I was demoted from my position because something was lost and it was not intentional. And I was told that I was, this is uncensored, thank God, that I was fucking useless. I remember mm-hmm. that day was a defining moment where I said, nobody else is going to make me feel this small ever again. Nobody's mm-hmm. going to make me do this or be this way. Mm-hmm. And I still know that even though this person made me feel horrible and I had this idea that this person is horrible, I still know that somebody loves them and that they love somebody. And so it just might have been like that toxic relationship that is with that one yeah. person and not necessarily, but unfortunately I don't have a positive relationship with that person. And I think I'm being vulnerable with this too, is that I'm human and, and not mm-hmm. everybody is going to, to jive with you. Not everybody, mm-hmm. you're, you're not going to love every single person. You can have the biggest heart in the world, but you can still feel human emotions And right here talking to you when I regretted saying that he was a horrible person, I know that he's not to everybody, but to me, he was a toxic person and it didn't flow. And so some people might be like, oh my God, she called him horrible. To me at that stage of my life, that's what it felt like. And I'm sure other people can probably relate Mm -hmm. to 
to people and having these relationships with other people that you cross that don't feel good to you, that don't light you up, that don't make you Mm -hmm. feel where you want to feel in your life. And Mm -hmm. unfortunately, it took me having this relationship with somebody to, to make me realize that I wasn't going to let anybody define who I was. I wasn't going to let anybody belittle me and talk to me in this way. But like mm-hmm. you were saying about how we kind of like suppress emotions and, and then the universe keeps bringing things up and up and up mm-hmm. and up until we deal with it. Well, that mm-hmm. situation got to that point because I just kept saying, oh, it's fine. Oh, it's mm-hmm. fine. Like it wasn't just one defining moment that this happened. There was multiples that led up to this and then there was a big mm-hmm. blowout and then there was a ton of words that were said to me that... I realized like, oh my gosh, I'd been pushing this and allowing this behavior to happen over and over again. And it was a defining moment of putting up this healthy boundary of saying, this is Mm -hmm. not what I'm available for at all. And Mm -hmm. so it's a really big learning experience. And I hope people hear it as that instead of just like a a negative thing. I hope it comes out the right way. (laughs) Oh, it definitely. I mean, from my perspective anyway, but (laughs) yeah, then again, how I'm picking it on. Right. And I, and I mean, for a note to the audience in a very, very loving way, if you are feeling triggered by any of this stuff, do look at how or why or what about it is triggering you. And I mean, I, I'm going to take a guess that most of the people listening to this are probably in agreement with what we're talking about not necessarily (laughs) being triggered. But, um, but I think that's what, like, one of the big things, like I said before as well, like, you know, you get to those points sometimes when you're like, if anyone positive even looks at me, I'm going to flip because you're just like so mad or upset about something. And I used to be like that all the time. Like, um, oh, yeah. I mean, innately inside, I think I've always been, um, well, of course, I've always been who I'm, I am now and who I'm meant to be. But I, I went through some really, really hard years where it was just like, that idea of taking self-responsibility was just not what I, what I could handle. And I was depressed, you know, I was even, um, for a time in my life, I was suicidal. Like I was just so low and, um, and I really do sympathize with people who um, have been through that or are going through that. When I look at what took me out of that though, it was literally, it came down to a decision I made one day. I was like, so over it. And I was like, so upset and I was so low and it was almost like I had this inner nudge and it was such a quiet voice at the time like this voice is so much louder in me now and I love it my inner cheerleader but it was so quiet at the time and it was like you're meant for more than this like it's not it's not over like you've got more to do and I was like okay then what the fuck am I gonna do like how am I gonna get myself out of this situation and then you know I just slowly followed one cue at a time and I um at the time for me the right decision was I got counseling and I um you know I just started making changes in my life and then suddenly the positive person didn't seem so bad anymore (laughs) and then suddenly that was me and now I'm the one that people are like oh you're too positive and I'm like well sorry not sorry (laughs) sorry not sorry yep yeah (laughs) and I love that you touched on that because it's true honestly if there's people who are listening to this and they're triggered by things we're both human and yeah. we have been through things and experienced things. We've, like you said, how you felt that you were the person that pushed those away. I sure as hell was too. I used to be mm-hmm. like, could you just shut up, please? Because how do you think that life is just this grandest thing and that you can have all these things? And I was stuck in this, why me? I literally was. And some mm-hmm. days in my life, I still get caught up in that where mm-hmm. I still have to check myself and I still have to remember that I'm made for more. And mm-hmm. so, and touching on suicide. I tried to commit suicide three times in my life. So I don't talk about, my parents don't even know that. So when they listen to this, they're probably going to be quite overwhelmed by it. But I don't talk about these things because they're not things that I haven't gone through or felt or knew that they have changed my life in such a positive way. And so I know that surrounding myself with people who are extremely positive, who have Mm -hmm. been through experiences in their life, I know that I want to be around them because it puts me in a different state. And I'm not Mm -hmm. saying that it happens overnight. I'm saying process your emotions. If you are feeling like crap, if you're you're feeling super negative, stop suppressing those because that'll just Mm -hmm. keep coming back and coming back and coming back. Mm -hmm. Feel it, allow it, process it, and then release it away and say like, this doesn't serve me anymore. But you have to acknowledge it. I'm not saying just be like, oh, someone's going to talk to me horribly. I'm not going to be with them anymore. No, you need to acknowledge why that's triggering you, why Mm -hmm. that's upsetting you, what boundary that's crossing, Mm -hmm. and then then move forward through this. So like, I like that you touched on those things because 
I went through postpartum depression. I've taken medication for de- depression and anxiety and OCD. I have had, I've tried to commit suicide. I have, there's, I've done drugs. I've done so many things that I suppressed my life and pushed my life to a point that I didn't want to be here anymore. That mm-hmm. to have this space to talk about it so openly, like, like you said, there's people mm-hmm. who can relate to it, who've been there, who are listening and may be triggered by it. And it is not intentional to trigger you. But if it is, maybe it's time to ask those questions as to why it's triggering Mm -hmm. you and what Mm -hmm. you can do to change that in a positive Mm -hmm. way. And so I love that you touched on that because when I was talking about the experience that I had, I didn't want it to come across in such a horrible way, but like this podcast is about like openness and powerful point of Mm -hmm. views and, and Mm -hmm. saying how you feel and, Mm -hmm. and it might trigger some people. And so Mm -hmm. I just, just want to be careful by it as well. Yeah, but I I really feel like, for example, with me, I have gotten to a point in my life now and I can't say that I'm always like 100% feeling like okay with it because I still like have this deep thing that I just want people to love me. But I know that not everyone loves me and um, the brighter I turn up, it's like more triggering for other people. But the biggest realization that I had as part of my purpose is actually to trigger people because it was in the times that I personally was triggered that led to my greatest change. And I know that for some people and that person that they're like, oh my gosh, I love you. I want to connect with you. I want to learn from you. I want to be best friends with you. And for other people, I'm like, that bitch, like she better shut up. Like, (laughs) and, And you know what? It's okay. Because if at the end of the day, one way or another, it's pushing you in the direction where you can discover yourself more and get to a point of deeper knowing or understanding with yourself, then I'm okay to be that person. You know, that's, that's okay too. Yeah. And I love that you touched on that because I guess I get worried about triggering people in, uh, you know, it's one of those see guys right now being human, you get stuck in feeling that you don't want to upset people, but you're reminding me that my podcast is literally, it's a polarizing podcast. It's about talking about these differences in opinions and really like blowing shit out of the water that sometimes people don't talk about like suicide, like depression, anxiety, OCD behaviors, all these things need to be talked about and should be talked mm-hmm. about and shouldn't be something that is embarrassing and that you're suppressing yeah. it should be something that you have the power to openly talk about. Yeah. And our society has deemed it as like an embarrassment or something that can't be because why would you feel that way? Why, why mm-hmm. would you ever get to that point? And it's, it's sometimes suicide is viewed as like this easy way out. I've literally heard people say that this is this easy way out and you can never be like, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like you, there, there's so much mentally and like we were talking about cells and like atom molecule, all these different mm-hmm. things that there is so much that goes on that I'm just, it blows my mind when people just like say certain things that really affect people on such a massive level that mm-hmm. with people who have struggled with certain things like that, it's just, oh, that's a whole other tangent for a whole other day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. Well, Honestly, before we leave this conversation, what is, is there anything else that you want everybody on here to hear before we end this? Because I could talk to you forever. Like we went from just like, you know, the fluffy business stuff. And then we got into spirituality and then we got into the real shit. So like, what is some other stuff? Is there anything else? Uh, So I think my message always comes back to one thing and that is that, you know, you are so much more powerful than you give yourself credit for right now. And your purpose is so meant to be heard. So it's like, whether that for you right now is the first time standing up for yourself and stepping into what you really want to do, or whether that for you is maybe, you know, stepping into a new level of, um, of yourself, you know, this new level of, um, vulnerability or openness or you know wherever that is for you right now in your life like just I want you to know that I like fully wholeheartedly believe in you because I have seen in too many times to ever doubt that people are not meant for greatness like you so are so don't hesitate in this journey and just you know know that if you are hesitating you can in that moment recognize that what you're doing and choose to have that image of the bubble we talked about earlier and and just step out into it anyway whether that is you know um moving past a dark time in your life whether that is stepping more into spirituality whether that is connecting more with amazing people and 
you know, if anyone ever wants to talk about that stuff, like haul at your girl, like, yeah, you know, like, like you said, Car, there's so much more we could have talked about. It's just, it's such a fun conversation. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So this is totally mom thing, guys. My little one is totally going to say hi to you, Viola. Hi. Yeah. Hi. This is, see, my moment. This is, this is, hi. I'm a mom. So my little one just got home. But I want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast, for being on here, for having this vulnerable conversation with me. You talk about vulnerability and I love that. I think that just opens up space for people to really feel like they can be themselves and mm -hmm. that they don't have to hide who they are. And so I love that we went into some very deep topics. We didn't go like extremely into them, but I think that I might have to have you on the podcast again to talk about some stuff because this was an incredible conversation and I really appreciate sharing this space with you. But before mm -hmm. we go, can you please let everybody know where they can find you through social media? Absolutely. So <laughs> I'm available at Viola Hug on everything. <laughs> so if you just search up Viola Hug, which I'm sure it will be in the show notes, you'll see how to spell yes. my name. Um, I'm on Instagram. I love Instagram. I'm always doing silly stuff on my stories or I'm on Facebook where I usually hang out to do my lives and other content. And I, my website's violahug.com as well. So feel free to connect with me anywhere that feels good for you. Amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And you guys, I will see you all in the next episode. Bye.